Okay, right now is July 16th, 2008. It's about the 1320 hours right at Universal Studios. Uh, I'm here with uh, Sergeant Allen. Uh, I'm here with uh, Detective Happy Wells. Uh, I'm also here with Casey Anthony. And uh, Casey, we, we talked earlier this morning, and uh, we're working a case looking for your daughter Kaylee. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, uh, we came here to Universal Studios. We're, we're sitting in a little conference room. Uh, obviously, the door isn't locked. We just closed it so we could have a little bit of privacy and talk to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple more questions came up. I'm going to need to ask you about. Uh, remember our, our, how I opened this whole thing in the morning yeah. by saying that you know we need to get the complete truth and and the snowball effect and, and, uh, and how it goes. Okay, uh, we're about halfway down that hill, three quarters down that hill, and it's a pretty big snowball, which means that there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, uh, just for a certainty, that everything you've told me so far has been a lie. I, I can tell you with, with a certainty, and, and let me explain why. Since I left you this morning, mm -hmm. I've gone to every address that you've told me. I've looked up every name. I've talked to every person that you, you, you wanted me to talk to or try to. Mm -hmm. uh, I've reached out. I've talked to your ex-boyfriend. I've talked to Amy. Uh, I've talked to Tony. Um, I came over here. I've already talked to all the employees. Mm -hmm. I found out all these names that you're giving me are people that either never worked here or have been fired here for a long time ago. Okay. So where we are right now is in, in a position that doesn't look very good for you. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be your, your escape hatch, so to speak. Okay, this is going to be the point where you stop all the lies and you stop all, all the fibs and you tell us exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just being you know being straight with you. Because yeah. obviously I know and you know that everything you told me is a lie, correct? Not everything that I told you. Okay. Uh, pretty much everything that you've told me, including where Kaylee is right now. That I still I don't know where she is. Sure you do. And here, here's I absolutely listen, do let me, not let me, know where she let me, is. Let me let me explain something. Together, a combined experience in this room, we all have about 30 years of doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, both myself and Sergeant uh, John Allen worked for the homicide division for several years. We, we've dealt with several people. We, we've all, we've conducted well, thousands of interviews between the three of us. You know, Happy's got 20 years, so just between the three of us, we've got several years. And I can tell you for a certainty that right now, looking at you, I know that everything that you've told me is a lie, I including the fact that you know your, your travel was last seen about a month ago, and that you don't know where she is. See, I. I, I'm very confident, just by having talked to you the short period of time, that you know where she is. I don't. You, you, you do. And here's the thing. We need to get past that because we can sit here and go back and forth all day long about I don't, I do, I don't, I do. It's pretty obvious that with everything that you've told us, nothing has been the truth. You know where she is. Now, my question to you is, is this. We need to find Kaylee. I understand that right now Kaylee may not be in very good shape. You understand what I'm saying? She may not be the way we or the way your family last remembers her. We need to find out from you where Kaylee is. This 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 right now is just this is going so far downhill and this has become such a mess that we need to end it. It's very simple. We just need to end it. I agree with you. I have no clue where she is. Sure you if do. If I knew in any sense where she was, this wouldn't have happened at all. You it know, wouldn't have happened listen, whatsoever. This the stuff about about Zanny, the the, the caretaker or, or the nanny taking care of it's them, the truth. it's not the truth because it went to the apartment complex. There's no person that ever lived there by that name. The apartment's been vacant since March, the same apartment. Now, the apartment that you pointed out to me, the two-story apartment, that's an old folks home. It's right across the street from your ex-boyfriend's house, who you never mentioned. And you said you wrote the address down because it was across the street. That's a lie because I've already talked to him and you know, we've already been by the house and we've already you know looked at everything we need to look at over there. Mm -hmm. Everything you told us is a lie. Well, now there's a couple of ways that this goes. Right now, we can, you know, we I've never met you before, so I can look at you in one of a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. I can look at you as a person who's scared, who's concerned, and who's kind of afraid of what's going to happen because of something bad that happened before. Or we can look at you as cold, callous, and a monster who doesn't care, who's just trying to get away with something that that something bad that happened and trying to cover it up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of those two options. Now. Is from much from what I've already talked to you, okay, you seem like a very bright young lady. You don't seem like someone who has no education. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to determine which way is this going to go. Are, are you are you a person who who's scared about the consequences of what happened? Or are you scared about something that happened? Or are you are you really this cold, callous person who doesn't care about what happened? It, it's one of these two options. I'm scared that I don't know where my daughter is. I would not have put my entire. Hold on, hold on. I want to ask. I want to ask you something. Yes, sir. Like you said, you you you, you seem like a pretty bright person. Okay, you're here willingly, right? You're mm -hmm. here because you want. You're here to try to help, right? Oh, absolutely. Your your whole reason for talking to us 
is, is to try to help, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's forced you to talk to us, right? No. You, you want us, you want us to, you're here because you call them, you want us to help find your daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me, let me ask you something. I want you to put yourself in, put yourself in somebody else, put, put, put yourself in my shoes for a minute, okay? Since you talked to him this morning in an attempt to try to help find your daughter, you've given him bad addresses, okay? You drove me all the way out here. We walked from the gate back here on the way to your office, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? To an, to an office that you don't have. We got all the way into the building, into the hallway out here before you finally says, well, I really don't have an office here. But until then, we were walking to your office, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it, I mean, does any of this make sense to you? I understand how well that sounds. No, I no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, here's the problem with that, though. Here's the problem with that, though, okay? Um, you can carry the weight of this around for a long time. It's not going to get any easier, okay? What he's trying to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you, you know, in the, in the amount of time that I've done this, almost 30 years now, okay, mm -hmm. I've learned this. People make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. We, every, all the three of us have all made some mistake, mistakes in our lives. Mm -hmm. We've done some things we're not proud of, okay? But then there comes a point in time, you either own up to it, you say you're sorry, you try to get past it, or you lie about it, and you bury it, and you lie about it, and you bury it, and you lie about it, and you bury it, and it just never, ever, 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 ever goes away. Mm -hmm. Okay, Th that's it. Okay, now you know, you, you know, I want, I want you to, to stop and think about what's going on here. Okay, at this point, we can explain that you're afraid, you know, that you were ashamed of maybe something bad that happened. You're afraid of maybe what happened. But now that we're giving you this opportunity and you continue to lie and you continue to lie, then what happens at some point it becomes there's no excuse, there's no reason, there's no reasonable, a reasonable person to look at this and go, wow, this is a person who really just doesn't care. Okay? I mean, I mean, I mean think about what, what we've done so far, okay? You say you call us because you want our help, you want us to find your daughter, okay? I'm calling you and I'm asking you for help. I'm asking you to help me find my child mm -hmm. that's been gone now for a month, okay? And to help you help me find the child, what I've done to this point is I've given you a bunch of bad addresses to go look at, addresses that people don't exist, okay? Then I take you to a place where I tell you that I work, okay? And I walk you past the security gate, okay? All the way to my office that I don't have, mm -hmm. okay? You start to get the picture? Or is this... Is this do you understand where we're headed here? I understand. Okay. That. Now you know, you're, by, by hiding this, by burying this, okay, you are not going to get yourself to a better place. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to cause everybody else around you to suffer. Okay. And at some point, this is going to come out. It always does. Mm -hmm. It always comes out. Okay. Now your best bet is to try to put this behind you as quickly as you can. Go to your parents and tell them. You know, some horrible accident. Whatever happened, happened. Get it out in the open now, okay? Instead of letting them worry and worry and worry and worry, okay? How old are you? Twenty-two. At some point, okay, you're going to want to mend, to, to mend things with your family, okay? Mm -hmm. You let this drag out for another three days, another week, another two weeks, okay? You make us solve this some other way, and we'll solve it. We we'll always do, okay? Okay. I mean, it, 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 there's, there's no point in coming forward to say, oh my God, this is what really happened once we figured it out, okay? You ever had anybody do anything wrong to you? Did anybody of hurt course. you in any way, okay? Let me ask you a question. When somebody's hurt you in the past and they've come to you and said, I'm sorry, okay? I really, am, I'm from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry for what happened. Do you forgive them? Yeah. What about somebody that does something to you and then lies and lies and lies? And lies? Lies and lies. You forgive them? It's a lot harder too sometimes. A lot harder too? Tell me the last time somebody hurt you over and over and, and, and let you suffer for a period of time and then and, and, and lied about it and then you caught them, okay? Well, once, they, once you caught them, that apology didn't mean a hell of a lot, did it? No. Okay? All right? Right now, your best bet is to just get it out in the open, whatever happened, and, let, and tell us now, okay? So we can, we can kind of start getting past this. Try to help you explain, okay? Because keep in mind, you're talking to people. There's nothing you're going to tell any of the three of us that's going to surprise us, okay? Mm -hmm. I've had to sit down with, with, with mothers who 
rolled over in their babies accidentally. I've had to sit down with mothers whose kids have drowned in swimming pools. I've had to sit down with mothers who had boyfriends who beat their kids to death, uh, you know, who, who felt horrible about what happened. And, and then try, and I've had to go to them and help them try to explain to their families, okay? And then I've also had to deal with people who have done horrible, unspeakable things to children and then lied about it and lied about it and lied about it, okay? And I'll bet you somewhere in there I've probably dealt with somebody who maybe made a mistake but continued to lie about it. Maybe they weren't such a bad person, but maybe the whole world didn't see it that way. Maybe their family didn't see it that way because they kept lying, uh, lying, and lying, and lying about it. And then when finally came, and, and, and then months down the road, or you know, days down the road, when they finally decided to come forward, okay, people were past it. You told me that you've lied to me for the last time. I don't, I don't listen to what you have to say. Don't talk to me anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've had to, you know, uh, you know, we've had to go into court and try to help people explain situations. And we've had to go into court in times and say, you know, the person just never said they kept lying to us and kept lying to us and lying to us and lying to us, okay? We're all human beings, okay? Mm -hmm. You tell me. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're a smart person. Figure it out, okay? So far, well, the only thing that we can say for sure at this point, okay, is that you have lied to him about all these things. Mm -hmm. You brought us here, okay? All right? Now, I want you to look at this from an outsider's perspective. Somebody somewhere down the road that we have to decide, you know, how this all plays out. Mm -hmm. What would you do? How would you see that person? How would you see that person differently? You might see somebody, maybe a young mother who made a mistake and, you know, maybe initially was afraid to tell the truth, but at some point came forward and said, horrible thing happened. I'm sorry. I, I feel terrible about it, but I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. The horrible thing that happened, and this is the honest to God's truth, of everything that I've said, I do not know where she is. The last person that I saw her with is Zenaida. She's the last person that I've seen my daughter with. And see, here, here's the problem. I, I think Sergeant Allen, Sergeant Allen's trying to get to this is that we, we, we know that's not the truth. We know, it, listen, it listen, 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 listen. We, we know that, that that's not true. That can't be the truth. Because if that were the truth, everything you would have told us would have been on the money. The addresses you would have taken us would have been on the money. Everything else would have, would have matched. If you had told us the truth, we wouldn't be here at Universal Studios at a place that you've been fired since 2006 with you trying to explain to us, you know, you have an office and, and, and all that stuff. Who, who wouldn't be here? So we know, and this is the part we need to get past, we, we already know that you're not telling us the truth, that you know what happened to Kaylee and you know where Kaylee is. But here's, here's, here's what we're trying to get by, is that there's, there's, you're, you're one, you fall into one of two categories, and I'm sure he explained it and I explained it, is that if, if this is something, that, an accident that happened, and, and, and you, no matter how you think people are going to look at you? They're going to look at you a lot worse if they show if, if you continue showing that you're, you're callous or, or not caring, and, and that you just show complete dispassion and disregard for human life. Mm -hmm. Or they can look at you as someone that you know what I can understand. I'm a young mother, or she's a young mother, first child. Something horrible happened. She's thinking, oh my God, my life isn't going good right now. I, I already know my life is struggling. People don't see me in that great of a light. I know I've got problems at home, and I've got problems with friends, I know I've got problems at work, or lack of work. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, something bad happens to my child, and people are going to think, oh, I'm just a devil. See, there's a difference between this person who makes a mistake and, and says, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, this is the reason I, I, I lied to you, this is the reason I was scared, compared to the person who might sit here and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a big difference there. And, and I can tell you now that everything you've told me is a lie. Everything that you've told me this morning from, from, from Zenny, from the addresses, from Universal, from all these people that you've talked to, including people that you never told me who their names and I found them and talked to them. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that you've told me this morning is a lie. Every single thing. There, there's one of two options right now. You need to tell me the truth and we can work with that. Mm -hmm. Or if you continue down this path and continue lying, I can tell you that when this, this snowball gets to the bottom of the hill, the only person that's going to get hurt in it is you. That's not true. A lot of people around you get hurt. Your a lot parents, of people are hurting right now. And, and you know what? One person put a stop to that. I've been trying. You haven't been wait, trying. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Let's go through this again. Okay. Stop me at the part that I say that's not true, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to go through this and I want you to stop me at the part that isn't the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. You take your daughter and you drop her off on June the 9th, okay? At, at somebody, at a babysitter's house, okay? 
Now, this is a babysitter that lives at this apartment, okay, that's been vacant. I dropped her off at that apartment, okay. at With, those stairs. Oh, you just walked her, you, you dropped I her off? I walked her to the stairs. That's where I dropped her off a bunch of other times, besides it, just that day. Okay, and when you dropped her off, you, you, who took her at that point? Zanny did. She took her okay, at so that point. So you left her, with, you left her in, in Zanny's care mm -hmm. on June the 9th, okay? So far, that's right, yes. okay? You first call the police about this when your mother and father, okay, uh, actually you don't call the police to report your daughter, Nelson. What happens is your parents find their car that's been towed mm -hmm. from Amscott, and your parents ask you where your daughter is, and you tell your daughter, or your parents, that you haven't seen your daughter for over a month, right? That's true, okay? So I haven't told anything. So, so far I haven't said anything's not true, okay? That, that's that's true, true, okay? Sound, that's true, it sounds reasonable to you, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay? When the police do get involved, okay, when, you're, when your parents involve the police in an attempt to locate your child because they're worried, mm -hmm. the first thing you do, okay, is you lie to the detective whose job it is to try to find your daughter and get her back into safe hands, okay? You give him all kinds of bad addresses to look at, right? Okay? So far I'm on track, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay? Then you bring us out to Universal where you say you work in an office to try to help find stuff that will help us find your daughter. I'm, I'm on track so far, okay? Mm -hmm. And we get here, we walk all the way down the hall to where you tell us, you don't really work here. You don't have an office here, okay? Mm -hmm. So far everything I've said is true, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay? And that sounds reasonable to you, okay? I I'm telling you this story. I'm saying to you, listen, I dropped my child off five weeks ago at the babysitter's house. And she's just disappeared. No, I didn't call the police and tell them. Matter of fact, I made some attempts to locate her on my own, but I didn't really get the police involved or, uh, you know, uh, do anything like that, okay? And, oh, by the way, um, I, I got my mom and dad's car towed, and then when my parents asked me what happened to my daughter, I told them I hadn't seen her in five weeks. So they called the police, okay? Now, what I did is I lied to the police when they got there, okay? I told them a whole bunch of crap that isn't true, gave them a bunch of bad addresses to go look at uh, where I know that my daughter's not there. And I did all this to try to help find my daughter. Makes sense to you, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you? It makes sense to you that I'm trying to help the police find my daughter by giving them a bunch of bad addresses? That makes sense to you? That's what I said, yes. No, no, I'm asking you. That makes sense to you. My attempt, that part of it? Okay, no, not my attempt to help him find my child, okay, what I've done to try to help him find my child is I've given him a whole bunch of addresses to go to that are bad addresses. That's what I did to help him try to find my child. That makes sense to you? I took him to the last place that I've seen my daughter. Besides that, I took them to other places that I've, okay, when you, that when I've you, seen Okay, When you live. brought us here, when you brought us here to go look in your office, that was supposed to help us how? Because everything we're doing here is about finding your daughter, okay? So I want you, okay, to explain to me how coming here to go to an office that you don't have, I want you to tell me how that's helping us find your daughter. Because everything, every bit of focus right now, okay, you've got three people here to try to help you. That's what we're here to try to help you find your daughter, okay? All right? And we came here to look for clues to look for evidence that will help us find your daughter, okay? Now I want you to tell me how that's helping find your daughter. We're here to, go, to come search your office for anything that will help us, okay? You could, and we're here because you brought us here, right? Mm -hmm. Now I want you to tell me how that's helping us find your daughter. That's but, but everything we're doing is to find your daughter. That's the most important thing to want to you right now, right? Kaylee's been up here. Maybe we can talk to security to see if she's come through the front. I know she's come to the park. She's gone to Disney. She's been at Seattle. She's been whoa, whoa, whoa. other places. Let, let's go back to let's let's. It's we're it's here. It's backwards way of no. It's of you know. It, it, and why do you think it's backwards? It's backwards because you haven't been truthful with us. Okay. Because I've been <laughs> reaching. Well, you've been reaching. Huh? I've been reaching to try to figure out a place where she actually is. So uh, once again, okay, you never did answer my question. You're reaching and helping find her by bringing us here to this office that you don't have. Is helping us find her how? Because what you're doing right now is you're doing everything you can to find your daughter. You have three experienced detectives right now whose sole focus is here to help you find your daughter. Okay, and we're here because you brought us here. Correct? 
Absolutely. You directed us here because we're going to your office to find evidence mm -hmm. that will help us find it, okay? Now that we're here, I want you to tell me how that's helping. What is it we're doing here? What's helping us right now, okay? We come to an office that doesn't exist. It's not helping. So why'd you do it? Honestly, I wanted to come up and try to talk to security. Maybe pass around a picture of Kaylee. I legitimately have not seen my daughter in five weeks. I didn't let anything happen to her, except I trusted her with somebody. Somebody that had been taking care of her, that had been taking good care of her. Someone that she was comfortable with, that I was comfortable what about, with. What about Jeff? You said Jeff worked here about, until about two months ago? No, he hasn't worked here for quite a ten while. Ten months? How long? It's been at least ten months. Okay. He got fired in 2002. Years. He hasn't been an employee here since 2002. What about uh, uh, the girl? Juliet? Yeah, what about her? She left two months ago. That's exactly what she had told me. Juliet Lewis left. never worked at Universal Studios. You're, I'm, I'm sorry. Is the baby's daddy actually dead? That's a good question. What is, are we going to find? Would you? I, how do you, I, how do you, I still have a copy of the obituary at home. I mean, you've told us so, so many untruths right now, I'm confused. That's Would your parents be upset if you had given the baby back to the daddy to take back for his grandparents, uh, for his parents to take care of? He passed away last year. We hadn't even talked much before that. So let me ask you me. this. Is the obituary in your office? No. I think I have a copy of the obituary at home. There's no office, so there's no anything anywhere. We've made that clear already. Right. So if I have a copy of it still, it would be on my computer at home. I'm pretty sure I kept that. I don't think that's something I would have gotten rid of. Zanny has never worked here. How do you explain that? She has an ID. She has an ID with her name on it. Just, like you, have, it. just like you have an ID? I do have an ID. Somewhere at my house. Both of my parents have seen it. Just Both like of my parents know that I've worked here. I used to have an office. Now? Just like you have an office? No, I don't have an office now. Okay. And we're here to, to go to what? To do what? We're here because why? Try and put things together. No, we're here in this building because we put a lot more together than I think you realize we put together. My question to you is we're in this office because we got here because we got here how to do what? Our purpose in coming here was to do what? Go where? I guess there wasn't a purpose. There wasn't a purpose whatsoever to come up here. So we're wasting time, valuable time, we ought to be spent looking for your daughter. I'm trying to think of places no, where I, I know she's I, been. You're not answering help. my question. Do you want us to help? Yes, you want us to find your daughter? I do want you to well, help. Well, then you need to help. Then, you, then, then, then what, a good starting point would be to answer the questions, okay? Mm -hmm. If I say to you we're here because, and then you just ignore that, like as if I never asked it, and go off in some other direction, is that answering the question? No. Okay. All right. Let's go through this again. We're here because we got here how? To do what? Because I lied. Because I brought you up here. And honestly, I was reaching for no, another No, stop right there. I want you to tell me how lying to us is going to help us find your daughter. It's not going to. Huh? It's not going to. Well, then if, 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 you're big, if, if the main thing you want to do is find your daughter, and you don't think lying to us is going to help us find her, why would you do that? Because I'm scared. And I'm, I know I'm running out of options. It's been a month. What are you scared of? I'm scared of not seeing my daughter ever again. Okay, I'm if you're scared, if you're not scared of not seeing your daughter again, okay, I want you to tell me how lying to us is going to solve that problem and help find your daughter quicker. Because if that's what you want, okay, obviously you're doing things to help us find your daughter, right? And I want you to tell me how lying to us is getting to that end. How is lying to us helping find your daughter faster? It isn't. Then why would you do that? But saying I don't know and telling you that I just dropped her off and that was the last time that I've seen her, even starting with that, everybody else is like, well, and what happened after that? You that remember, can't just be it. You remember the phone call you were telling us about? Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Did you actually talk? What, what day was it you talked to her? Yesterday. You remember what time of day? Around noon. It was from a private number. Okay. And what'd she tell you? What'd your daughter say to you? She said, hi, Mommy. And that's it? And she started to tell me a story, talking to me about her shoes and books. And it's important that you tell me. I mean, maybe there's something in what she said that can help us figure out where she is. What, what did she say? I tried to ask her where she was, and okay. she just kept talking about the book that she's right. been reading. We have videos of her reading the story, and she's telling me the story. So like she's, she's happy, and she's happy. 
She seemed happy. perfectly fine. There was telling nothing you, in the telling, background. Telling you about a book, telling you seen not no sign of any type of stress at all. Not at all. Great, that's wonderful. Let me ask you a question. Your daughter hasn't seen you in over a month. Okay. And you're saying that everything contained in these statements are true and accurate? Yes. Also, before I turned on the recorder, I gave you a chance because I wanted to explain what happens if the day right now is July 16, 2008. The time right now is 0411 hours. I'm Detective Mellish with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm um, present here at 4937 Hope Spring Drive. I reference Orange County case number 08-069208. I am with Casey Anthony, is that correct? Yes. And Casey, can you please state your birthday for me? 03 19 1986. Okay. Casey, you understand this is being recorded? Yes. you have any objection to that? No. All right. Okay, so I got called here in, um, by Sergeant Reggie Hosey with the Orange County Sheriff's Office in reference to a missing child. We sat here and, and talked for a, a short moment before we went on tape because I wanted to make sure that your sworn statement, which I'm looking at, was accurate. I'm um, looking at four pages of a sworn statement on the bottom. It appears to be your signature. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you're saying that everything contained in these statements are true and accurate? Yes. Also, before I turned on the recorder, I gave you a chance because I wanted to I explain what happens if if you make a false report or if there's something about this incident that you're not telling us the truth of. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure I made it perfectly clear that you know, if you want to go ahead and, and rescind this statement and if you want to tell me a different story about what happened, mm -hmm. if you're basically if you're trying to, to fabricate a story to kind of make something look a little bit better, mm -hmm. now is your time to tell me. Are you telling me that this is the story you want to stick with? That's the truth. It's the story of the Okay. Um, in your own words, let's go, let's go back. Your daughter's name is Kaylee, C-A-Y-L-E-E. -E. Yes. Marie Anthony. She was born August 9th. 2005. Okay. And according to your statement back on August 9th, I'm sorry, uh, back on June 9th, 2008, you took Casey to a babysitter's house. Yes. And who was this babysitter? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Do you know how to spell the first name? Z E N A I D A. And where was Zenaida's? Where did you drop Zena uh, the your child off? The Sawgrass Apartments on Conway, Michigan. Do you remember the address? I don't remember the address. Do you remember an apartment number? Two ten. Okay. It's on the second floor. If you were to pull into the Sawgrass Apartments, would the building be the one closest to the road, furthest back, halfway? As soon as you go straight, you go over one speed bump, and it's the first one on the right-hand side. Okay, is there a pool next to it, or is there anything about the there's, apartment that stands out? There's a welcome sign. It's, um, I guess there's a little shed close to the building, maybe about 10 yards away. Okay. How long had you known Zenaida? Almost four years. It'll be four years Christmas this year. And where did you meet her? Who did you meet her through? A mutual friend, his name is Jeffrey Michael Hopkins. Um, I met him at Nickelodeon at Universal, and I met her through him. She does was his son's nanny at the time. Does Jeffrey still work at uh, Universal? No, he does not. How long has it been since he left? About nine, ten months, give or take. Did he move back to Jacksonville? He moved up to North Carolina for a short time and moved down to Jacksonville within the last three months. When was the last time you spoke with him? About a week and a half ago. Okay. Do you know a telephone number for him? I can find a number for him. I don't know a number offhand. No, I do not. You mentioned something uh, before we went on tape about your cell phones. Yes. Uh, I have two phones. I just received a new phone through work, through mm -hmm. Universal. Um, the phone won't keep charged, so I use my old phone that I actually had gotten, again, through Universal for work. Okay. You're, you, did you lose a phone? Yes. Was it your personal phone? It was my personal phone, but I also use it for business. Okay. What's your what's the number for the phone that you lost? 407-619-9286. Um, did the you same keep number. that same number? Yes, it's you still the same the number. Phone. I just lost the phone. And in that phone, you're saying it was the SIM card, and the SIM card had the contact Actually, information? Actually, the SIM card is in my Nokia phone, but I know there's numbers saved to the cell phone itself. So if we get the actual phone, I know I have one other number for Zenaida, and probably a number for Jeff besides work numbers and 
But they're not in your SIM card? They're not saved on the SIM card. They're saved on the phone. I've been trying to figure out on that new phone how to save numbers from the phone to the SIM card and switch them back and forth. So that way I have everything all in one piece. Okay, so the phone where you had the number saved was lost? Yes. I filed an incident report. But how did you end up keeping the SIM card? I had taken it out. I know I left the phone on my desk. I had switched the SIM card back to my old phone because this was the phone that actually would keep charge. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have a working phone instead of having a phone that would only stay charged for about a half hour and then it would die and I can't make any more calls. It's for me not so practical. After you, after you switched the SIM card was when the phone went? I left it. I know I left it on my desk and I hadn't been at work for at least three or four days. And you said you made the report to Universal? Or? Yes, with security. One nine days ago. Nine days ago? Yes. Okay. So you met uh, Zenaida through Jeffrey Hopkins? I did. And yes. his son Zach Hopkins, I guess, Zenaida used to watch over Zach? Yes. And you said you've known Zenaida for about four years? Almost four years, so yes. You knew, you knew her before you had your child? Well, I met her just before. I was actually pregnant at the time, so. And when did she start watching over your child? Um, it's been within the last year and a half, two years that she started watching Kaylee. I had another friend watch Kaylee that I'd, I've known since middle school. When she went back to school, I was looking for a new nanny. Jeff offered to have Zenaida watch both kids. She agreed, and it kind of went from there. Before Zenaida started watching over your child, who was, a, who was the nanny? Her name was Lauren Gibbs. G-I-B-B-S. And when did Lauren stop watching uh, your child? Um, maybe April of 2006. Okay. And right in April 2006, roughly, is when Zenaida started yes. watching over? How would you normally drop off, or how would you normally do the exchange with your child and Zenaida? Would you drop the child off? Would she meet you somewhere? I would usually drop her off for... Yes. A few months, we would go over to Jeff's house. He lived over in Avalon Park. That was a couple years ago, almost a couple years ago. And you would go to Jeff's house, why? To drop off Kaylee. That's where Zanaida would go to watch both of the kids. Okay. It was in a nice centralized area. He had a decent-sized house. It was good room for the two of them. Then I started bringing Kaylee over to Zanaida's apartment. How long were you using, or were you going to Zanaida's apartment? How when did you start taking wow. Kaylee? Um, I guess maybe the end of 2006, beginning of 2007. So since the end of 2006, beginning of 2007, mm -hmm. you started taking Kaylee to Zenaida's house on Sawgrass. She had an apartment on, I guess it's considered Glenwood, but it's off of Bumby and Robinson, mm -hmm. close to downtown. She lived there for quite a few months and moved over to Sawgrass just recently this year. The uh, house on Bumby, do you remember the address or remember where it's at? I know it's off of Glenwood. I don't remember the apartment number offhand. No, I do not. And how long would you say you dropped the child off there from the beginning of, end of 06, beginning of 07 to... Um... Maybe about six, seven months, so maybe the middle of 2007. So she moved into Sawgrass about the middle of 07? She's been at that apartment in Sawgrass for about the last three or four months. She lived with her mom for a little bit. Where does her mom live? She lived off of Michigan. Do you know where the house is? Um, it's not a very well-marked neighborhood. It crosses just over Conway. It's one of the big stretches of neighborhoods. Had you dropped the child off there before? Yes. If you had to find the place, would you be able to find it? Most likely, yes. I think I'd remember the house. Okay. So she was living off of Glenwood, then moved into her mom's house somewhere off of Michigan, mm -hmm. and then moved and into then the Sawgrass. And then over to Sawgrass. So Sawgrass three or four months ago, off of Glenwood until mid-07, mm -hmm. then mom's house. Her mom wasn't living there at the time. Her mom had gotten another place with her sister but she was staying over at the house and moved in with the two girls that are referenced in the pages. She was living with these two girls at Sawgrass? Yes. Okay. Go back to your statement. You dropped off your, uh, you dropped off Kaylee on 
June 9th and walk me through. You dropped her off to go to work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Get off of work and go from there. I got off of work, left Universal, driving back to pick up Kaylee like a normal day. And I show up to the apartment, knock on the door, nobody answers. So I call the night of the cell phone and it's out of service. It says that the, no, the phone is no longer in service. Excuse me. So I sit down on the steps and wait for a little bit to see if maybe it was just a fluke, if something happened. And time passed. I didn't hear from anyone. No one showed up to the house. So I went over to Jay Blanchard Park and checked a couple other places where maybe possibly they would have gone. A couple stores, just regular places that I know Zanaya the shop's at and she's taken Kaylee before. And after about 7 o'clock when I still hadn't heard anything, I was getting pretty upset, pretty frantic, and I went to a neutral place. I didn't really want to come home. I wasn't sure what I'd say about not knowing where Kaylee was still hoping that I would get a call or, you know, find out that Kaylee was coming back so that I could go get her. And I ended up going to my boyfriend Anthony's house, who lives in Sutton Place. Did you talk to Anthony about uh, what happened with Kaylee? No, I did not. Had Anthony ever seen Kaylee before? Yes, he had. Have you talked to anyone about Kaylee, about your incident with Kaylee? Or the fact that she's of missing? A couple people, a couple mutual friends. Who did you talk to about um, it? I talked to Jeff, Jeffrey Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I also attempted to contact Zenaida's mother and never received a call back from her. Do you know Zenaida's mother's name? Um, wow, man. Um, I think it's Gloria. Do you know a telephone number for Zanada's mom? I do not know. Do you have any of these numbers pro to them to your SIM card that you kept into your other phone? No, I do not. How long did you have this old phone? I've had the Nokia for almost a full year. Okay. So after a full year of dealing with Zanida and having her babysit, and you don't Switching remember... Switching numbers back and forth. Zanida's number has changed a couple different times. She switched services between having Sprint and having AT&T or Singular. What about Jeffrey? You've known him for at least four years. His numbers changed a couple different times from when he moved from Orlando up to North Carolina and back down to Jacksonville. I know I do have a current number for him. How would you get that number? If we can find that other phone or I might have it online, I may be able to access it off the internet. Okay. Who else did you talk to about this besides Jeffrey? You said you tried to call Zanaida's mom. Mm -hmm. You talked to Jeffrey. Who else did you talk about? I talked to Juliet Lewis. She's one of my coworkers at Universal. She works. You still work at Universal? Yes. What the, What do you do at Universal? An event coordinator. Okay. What is Juliet? What position is she? Where is she works? She's also an event coordinator. We work in the same department. You have a number for Juliet? Ooh, offhand. I can't think of one. Is she in your SIM card? No, she's not. Some of the more recent numbers, her number just changed because she just moved back up north. She, within the last two months, has finished moving up to New York. She's so, subleasing her apartment. So Julia doesn't work at Universal anymore? No, she does not. When did she leave Universal? About two months ago. Who else did you talk to about it? It's been within that small group. I've tried to find out just information from people going out to different places like Fusion Ultra Lounge and a couple bars that I know and I had gone to downtown before to see if just kind of random talk if anybody heard about my nanny or talked to her lately. Did you tell anyone specifically that Zenaida took your child? No. The only two people that I specifically told were Jeff and Juliet. And you don't have a number for Juliet? Not offhand, no. I do not. It's not on your phone? It might be online? It's definitely online. I know it's on one of our old worksheets. Um, her old number, which could still be active, I'm not sure if it is, but I know she does have a new number, which I just programmed into that when other was, phone. When was the last time you talked to Julia? Hmm, about three weeks ago. 
shortly after this happened. So you talked to her after she left? Mm-hmm. What's the reason, uh, I asked you this before and I'll ask you this for the record, what's the reason you didn't call the police before? Since right now we're, we're here because your grandparents or your, your parents asked you about the child and they were concerned, didn't get an answer as to where the child was, they called the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you call prior to today? I think part of me was naive enough to think that I could handle this myself, which obviously I, I couldn't. And... I was scared that something would happen to her if I did notify the authorities or got the media involved or my parents, which I know would have done the same thing. Just the fear of the unknown, fear of the potential of Kaylee getting hurt, of not seeing my daughter again. I asked, yes. you, this, I asked you this at the onset and I asked you before we went on tape and I'll ask you again just to make sure we're clear. Uh, is there anything about this story that you're telling me that is untrue? Or is there anything that you want to change or divert from what you've already told me? No, sir. Um, did you cause any injury to your child, Kaylee? No, sir. Did you hurt Kaylee or leave her somewhere and you're no. worried that if we find that out that people are going to look at you the wrong way? No, sir. And you're telling me that Zenaida took your child without your permission She's and hasn't returned her? the last person that I've seen with my daughter, yes. Where did Zenaida, does she have another job besides watching children? She has a seasonal ID for Universal. However, the only job that I know that she's had for the last few years, she's been a nanny. So seasonal employee at Universal? Mm -hmm. When was the last time she worked at Universal, do you know? I have no idea. Does uh, Kelly take any medications? Does she mm -hmm. suffer from any conditions, any mental conditions that no, we need to know? not at all. Um, it was brought up before about taking some money from some people. I want to make sure I get it on tape. Uh, do you have any problems with drugs or narcotics, either mm -hmm. prescription narcotics or drugs, cocaine, ecstasy, mm -hmm. meth, anything like that? Nothing like that. Have you ever been... Uh, have you ever been, ever been committed for thoughts of suicide? Have you ever been on Lakeside, anything like that? No. Is there any underlying cause to why Zenaida would have taken your child? No, nothing that... Did she ever make any statements to you about... Only how much she loves Kaylee and how great of a kid she is. And have you talked, and when you talked to Jeffrey afterwards, I'm assuming that Jeffrey's child is still with him? His child is still with him. Okay. You said Zenaida had family up in uh, New England, up in New York or Yes, something? she has family down south, her mother and her sister. Um, her brother's in New York. She's originally from New York. And where's down south? Um, Miami area. Where's she originally from? New York. Uh, was she born and raised in New York? she have family outside of the country? or? I don't know. As far as I know, she pretty much grew up there, moved down here, went to the University of Florida. Is she Puerto Rican? Is she Dominican? Is she white? She's mixed. She's black and Puerto Rican. And you don't know what her birthday is, or you don't know what her birthday is? It's in September. That's all I can remember at the moment. If, um, when we finish this, if you, would you be willing to drive with me to show me where her mom lives and the apartment that you used to drop her off at? Yes. Okay. Is there anything I haven't asked you about, um, Kaylee or Zanida, or just this incident in particular that you feel is important that you wanted to tell me about before I turn this off? Um... I mean, Kaylee has very distinctive features, even if her hair was cut or changed. She has dark hazel eyes, they're brown and green. She has a birthmark on her left shoulder. Um, what kind of birthmark? It's just like a small line. It almost looks like a small little beauty mark. Anything else? I just want my daughter back. Would you raise your right hand for me? Yes. Do you swear and affirm everything you just told me is the truth? Yes. True? Yes. True? Yes. True? Yes.